Welcome to Shamanism, Metaphysics, and Grace. I'm Lauren Hubelay, and I feel so honored to be able to host this series each week with my dear colleague and mentor, Jyoti Wind. Um, today, we are going to um, take a little leap into some new territory, but very connected to where we've been. And if you take a look back two weeks in our series, we had a beautiful discussion about death. And um, Jody shared such um, insights and wisdom um, that I would highly recommend if you didn't catch that episode to have a have a look at it either before you listen all the way through this one or shortly thereafter. But um, I'm excited to get into this topic of afterlife with you today, Jody. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. So Jyoti, how about if you open up our space for us today? Okay. Grandmothers and grandfathers of the East, we call to you. We ask you to join us, flesh out our insights, and thank you for this day. Grandmothers and grandfathers of the South, we call to you. We ask for you to ignite our passions, our love of what's coming next, even our love of the unknown. Grandmothers and grandfathers, healing spirits of the West, we call to you. We ask to learn how to receive what is ours, to be able to take in what is next for us. Grandmothers and grandfathers, wisdom keepers of the North, we call to you. We ask for your wisdom in being able to see what we look upon. <clears throat> Grandfather Sky, keeper of the starry night, we ask for your protection. Grandmother Earth, you who we walk upon, may we walk upon you and our lives with mercy and compassion. And to that wise being inside of us that informs us when we listen. May that being be present. So I have something as a, a prelude to what we're going to talk about, perhaps. And it's a poem called Ferrier. You who ferry the dead, rowing across the dark waters, opening a portal of light on the other shore for those half blind from shock, from those who fear their deeds payback, for those with fog filled minds unable to know they have died, for those asleep and being led by others. You are the psychopomp, the farrier of souls. You open the light filled door. You hear the hallelujahs of old kin, old friends, as their loved, loved ones come home. You are the last earth hero they will see. Mm. Beautiful, Jyoti, thank you. Jyoti, I think one of the most um, beautiful gifts you've offered folks through this series is um, a way to view life um, not being fearful of the unknown and what comes next and and one of those is the shamanic perspective of death to today we move one step further is what is the shamanic perspective after death and how can those of us um, who are students of shamanism be of service 
Well, there's a term that I had never come upon in all the years I did shamanic work um, <clears throat> called psychopomp. And, and it comes from the Greek. Psyche means soul and pomp means guide. So it's a soul guide. Um, it's it's a, a being, a person, a being um, who guides souls after they've shed their body. And so um, there, there's different ways of looking at this um, from a shamanic perspective. Um, your power animals, your guides, your um, compassionate spirits, whatever you call them, um, guide the soul, guide you. Um, is available to help guide other souls in their passage. Um, from a shamanic perspective, some souls are stuck. They get stuck. I liken it to the um, Catholic limbo or purgatory, uh, kind of a bit, um, and, and they just get stuck and, and they can't accept that they've died or they don't realize they've died or they don't know how to continue. And so a psychopomp um, will show up and uh, help guide that person, open a portal of light and help that person pass through. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's the basic. Yeah, so Jody, let me just ask this. So when i pass on and shed this physical body i will either be led through the portal and um and 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 evolve from that place from speaking from a shamanic perspective or i might get stuck yes um most people seem to be able to pass through okay Sorry. And they're reunited with their kin, with their friends. I, you know, there's conversation. So I'll be the first smiling face you'll see when you die. You know, trust that. Right. You know, yeah. um, but some people, you know, have different belief systems, yeah. and some people die in shock uh, through, you know, a massive earthquake, let's say, or um, uh, you know, war. Um, there's many different ways that that death takes us let's say and um and so we don't have time to prepare and we don't have time to allay our fears we don't have time to kind of align ourselves with what's happening in the moment in as conscious a way as possible we're just gone we're out body's gone no way back in silver cord that connects us our spirit with our body is severed and we are in a different plane of existence um and so these beings come and help people find their way help people find the light so to speak um you know there's a lot of different teachings about all sure. of this stuff from a shamanic point of view um you if you are doing psychopomp work if you are led to be a guide you're holding space but it's the beings who work with you that are actually doing the work and actually opening the portal and helping people pass through um it's but you are necessary. You are a necessary piece with your consciousness and your ability to hold space. Um, but it's it's not you that's doing the work. It's you are in service to this process and you hold space while this happens for people. Um, a psychopomp does not go looking for souls to save, quote unquote. Um, they are open to being found, but they do not go looking for souls to save. Okay. I, I want to clarify this for, for our listeners because so someone passes and um, there, there is a process that there will be guides there that or family members as guides that move us through and and people 
speak of this process that, that have come back, right? They see an aunt or a grandmother that's inviting them or a, or a former partner. So, so we have information, clear information about this, that this happens. And through the shamanic perspective, um, we know that people can get stuck. So what I'm hearing you say is there is a term for a type of work on this side, on, on the physical, ordinary time plane, where someone could study to assist souls that become stuck. Absolutely, Lauren. Yes, thank you. Thank you for flushing that out. <laughs> Yes. No, no I, I want to get clear because I know for me um, that really took some hearing it a number of times. You know, there, there's so much fear wrapped around this whole death process that prevents us from being able to be creative and let our our um, guard down and understand that there are some other possibilities other than that we fall into this scary dark hole. Yeah, yeah, and and even you know the specter of death that we have in um, the European Northern European mindsets and that came to you know the Americas with the colonizers and stuff. Um, you know, there's this this image of death as this grim reaper, where other cult cultures, um, I remember speaking to this friend of mine one time, and he said, well, in my culture, he said, death is a woman, and, and she comes to gather you up, and she sends her maidens of death f to you when you're getting ready to help prepare you, and, and just uh gather you up in a big hug so to speak and and help you pass through um so there's there's different ways of looking at it but we have this specter that incites fear that will do everything we can to avoid this process and yet we all know that the body ages and the body has its own lifespan let's say its own intelligence its own desires and its own lifespan and at the end of that you you lay it down and you continue on your consciousness continues and um i think that the biggest thing for me is is realizing you know it's more shock than anything else that get people stuck Mm -hmm. on from passing cleanly through um i think it's um how you die um not that it totally limits your death experience but it can um but that there's you know uh, in a lot of old metaphysical and spiritual circles there was a desire to die as consciously as possible so that you could kind of slip out you know, and um, not be uh, ridden with a, a great deal of fear, but it's just something kind of like I imagine coming to birth here, you know, and, and all the people who greet you and they're so happy you've come and you're this little tiny baby, this little infant, and everybody's so glad you've, you've finally come, you know, and um, I would imagine that it's the reverse process of when you pass on there are those beings who greet you and they're so happy that you're there wow what a different picture than yes folks walk around with i love this you know toti that the image that keeps coming to my mind um from our history uh, is the egyptian um view on this and and passing through the underworld and how how does that relate to the shamanic perspective well i feel like um you know if you look back at the traditions from the tibetan book of the dead to the egyptian book of the dead and there's an american book of the dead that uh some people put together a number of years ago in in the 70s i think um when there was a lot of looking at this what is the death process um uh, I think that, you know, we have a, a time after our body dies 
for us to make amends. We've talked about this before. And, and so you walk through the shadow of the valley of death, you know, as it's put in Christianity. And um, you, you take care of old business, you know, you do your apologies, you do your forgivenesses, so that you, you leave this life as clean as possible, you know, without something dragging on you. I mean, we may take unfinished business with us anyway, but as much as we can be conscious of, and and if possible, even before the death experience, we want to kind of mitigate all of that so that we can leave as cleanly as possible. And so um, I, I feel like that passing through the underworld and, you know, it's, it's just, in a sense, it's just cleaning it up. Mm you know, cleaning up our lives, um, you know, giving what's needed to where it's needed so that we can leave okay. without a whole lot of baggage that we're taking with us because it's an energetic balance, uh, baggage. And, um, you know, as much as we can clean it up, that's the best, I think. Um, as far as you know, I it's it's shock and trauma. I think I I think about you know um, souls from the Holocaust. I think about um, 9/11. I think about the wars we've had. There are people who dedicate a lot of their lives in this psychopomp tradition to uh, doing journeys to help those people in those kind of situations especially wars the american revolution the war of 1812 the the wars all over the world that they their spirit goes there with their protective spirits and ha help beings who are still walking around the battlefields not realizing they've died or not knowing what's next um yeah, there's a, a lot of uh, divergent thoughts here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I let me let me ask you this question because I, the, get, being the technician here, I I under, we understand this death process. What I would love to have you break down is what is the what does the psycho pump do? What does that really look like from that perspective? The psychopomp is the witness. There are beings that you can work with that uh, will show up when you want to do this work besides your own um, allies and that are kind of versed in this work and uh, will help these spirits uh, clear themselves in order to pass into the light. Okay, some people are uh, some beings are still holding on to certain things. Some beings are um, needing to let go of certain things that they're carrying ancestrally. And so it's important for them to kind of let go. Mm -hmm. Some people work with their ancestors. They call their ancestors to help them do this work, to help them, uh, to help open a portal. And, and in a sense, we're more of a witness than anything else as we watch these souls cross this bridge perhaps to this open portal of light and so that they can go into the light mm -hmm. um i feel like and i've said this before that this is a shamanic renaissance time right now because there were always shamans who took care of this work and kept the different planes of existence clear and clean and not and we have this huge backlog of people who have died who have not been helped when they needed help because there wasn't enough shamanic practitioners let's say to go around i mean mediums do this work um people do this work through creative visualization there's many different approaches to this kind of thing to help people pass on and from a shamanic perspective, someone that trains to do this does this through a journey. Yes, yes, they do a journey, they gather their crew of spirit beings and helper spirits, and they journey to uh, 
wherever they need to go. They're taken. They ask to be of service. They ask to do this work. And so these other allies take them to where they need to go and or a spirit will come and ask for help. You're not out there, you know, dragging souls across this bridge through this portal. You're there and if someone needs help, they will come. They'll find you. Your light is what draws them. Yeah. I think in training with you in this area, that was the the most difficult piece to accept, like really. I just show up and these folks will show up for me. And yet it was profound and very obvious that there are souls um, in the thousands that are just yes, waiting. That are just waiting. Um, one of the first, when I first went looking for a teacher for this and, and couldn't find one and um, uh, an Egyptian uh, shamanism teacher I had studied a bit with said to me, Jyoti, just go do a journey and ask your allies to help teach you this. They'll teach you. And I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, is that deep enough? Do I need head knowledge? You know, do I need to study with a physical person? And I couldn't find one. And I looked and yeah, I, I really beat the doors down. But um, so I started doing that. And, and so one of the first uh, souls that came to me was a little girl. I, I just remember red. She had blonde hair and I think she had a red dress on or it was a red car she was near and um, she had just been killed. She was four or five years old and she had just been killed in a car accident and she wanted her mother to know certain things, you know, so in spirit. We whispered to the mom, you know, what the little girl wanted her to know. And then one of my guiding spirits took this little girl's spirits off into the light. And and that was um, that was very interesting. And then um, I also worked with um, this man, this soldier who had died and he felt very bereft because he felt his father had abandoned him when he was a child his father had been a soldier also and so this man um he was a younger man he had died in a war and he had been around on these other planes for a while waiting and um one of my guides was able to go find his father's spirit and they were reunited and the the son realized that the father had been killed and how much the father missed the son and loved the son and there was a lot of healing there in that moment and they both went off into the light together i mean there's so many different kinds of experiences yeah and joti i i think it can't be said enough that it's not like i'm a mom and my child passed and I want you to ferry my child across. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not like that. Yeah. Because that has come to me. Sure and, it has. And, and somebody, you know, pretty close in friend, why, why can't you do that? Why can't you do that for me? Why can't you do that for him? I said that that's not up to me. If if I'm to guide him, he'll find me. Yeah. So yeah. again, this is being true to the soul's path. Yes, yes. And it's being true to that hollow bone of not thinking you know, you know, and you're gonna go find this soul and you're gonna drag them into the light wherever they are. Um, it's, it's just allowing. It's allowing a natural course to, to work. You know, it's like when the midwives, the lay midwives took back the birth process, you know, there's lay midwives now taking back the death process. And also on the other side, there are those beings who are facilitating that process of this, that soul leaving let's say the earth's atmosphere and all the planes around the earth and helping them go beyond to reunite with family, to reunite with ancestors, to go on the next part of their path. Um, psychics, uh, spiritualists uh, believe in a summer land. 
that you go to this place where everything's beautiful and it's forever spring and it's uh, you see your friends and you see like minded people and and um, and I, I think that's probably true for them until it's no longer true and it's time for either the next birth or the next experience. Right. Right. Yeah, so many questions coming up at once. Sure. You're right. I mean, it, it's it's a huge topic, and I'm so grateful for you to break it down in um, bite-sized chunks for folks because uh, it's a lot to wrap your brain around, and it r requires us to go back to ourselves and say, "What is it I believe? How do I see the death and afterlife process?" What have I been told, but what do I really believe to be true today? And what am I open to? What am I open to learning about or seeing differently and changing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because maybe the old ways don't exactly fit. Yeah. 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 And what's fascinating, Jyoti, is it actually starts here by understanding the afterlife everything that we do here then has a different tone to it and a different flavor right because it, it it's all connected if we think of them that this life it's over then we live differently it's it's like uh i remember reading one time um about how people live their lives in fear of death mm -hmm. so and and people who have near-death experience don't have that anymore. And so their life changes and their life is very different and more joy filled and enjoyable because they already know it's not this dreaded experience at the end of their life that they're pacing themselves moving toward. It, it's more like a, um, it, it, it takes the sting out of all of that so that we can enjoy the time we have here to do the things we feel drawn to do and love the beings, the other beings that we feel drawn to love. And um, and then when it's time to go, we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. You know, I think there's one more point I think it's worth bringing up at, at, in this topic is the why. Like, why would we do this? Why would someone do psychopump work? What does that help to move in, in the bigger scheme of things to help souls move along? Well, in the biggest scheme of things, it kind of clears the decks. You know, it makes more room for uh, just a natural process of, you know, leaving your body and, and moving on and moving into the light. Um, it's service. It's, uh, you know, just being of service to your fellow human, even after they've dropped the, the body. It's sometimes few people just feel called to work in that field, whether it's the, the actual death process and helping people pass over, whether it's uh, praying for their soul, whether it's um, helping their soul pass in, find and pass into the light whether it's uh, remembering that soul long after they've passed and, and surrounding them in light. And, um, you know, it, it, I, I hate to put it as a calling, you know? I mean, it's, it's something much simpler than that, I think. But I think it also is something that people, some people are drawn to and other people, absolutely not at all. Sure, sure. Great. Choti, I think you have a little exercise for I us. do. I do. Okay. So if people just close their eyes, take a nice deep breath to let go of the cares of the day, and just breathe out any performance anxiety to get this right. It's just an idea. So as you sit quietly listening to your breathing, just imagine, let your imagination be free. And just imagine this young woman clothed in a green gown and she comes to you. 
She's standing in front of you. And she says, I'm the maiden of death. And I'm the one who comes to help you leave your body. I'm the one that will be there at those moments when you leave taking your life here. When those people around you that you've loved are letting you go and giving you permission to go, I'm the one that will take your hand and take you where your next step is. I will be there with you. I will hold your hand until you feel safe. Thank her. And when you're ready, come back to yourself and open your eyes. Lovely. Thanks so much, Jyoti. Jyoti, I'm sure that this um, evoked a lot of curiosity in our listeners. Um, how could someone learn about psychopump work? Um, there's a video that Laura Perry did for a conference in England a couple years ago, and it's still available on YouTube if you uh, Google or if you search her name, uh, Laura Perry, P-E-R-R-Y. Um, there's a book by Chris Allen called A Guide of Souls. There's a book by David Kowaleski called Death Walkers. Um, you can find different pieces of information about it. Um, uh, you can also email me at wind.joti at gmail.com. And um, I'll answer whatever I can answer. Great, great. Joti, thanks again for sharing all your wisdom. You're welcome, Lauren. Thank you.